y'all and welcome to the crazy sock lady youtube channel my name is Kay, and in this video we are going to be just sitting and chatting i'm going to be answering some questions it is time for the march q a video i have my computer over here with so many questions that you guys put in from february's q a video i've got my muscleberg hat i need to silence my phone <laughs> Got my Musselberg hat that I'm working on out of Breaking Yarn in the Gray Matter colorway. This is just going to be one for a Christmas gift. And I just finished recording the Summer Sock Camp info video. So all of the information about camp. So I've still got my braids in. I'm going to silence my phone right now. Jenny is texting me. <laughs> Okay, phone silenced. All right, we're just gonna jump in with answering some questions. So these are all from February's Q&A video. And then if you have a question um, for April's Q&A video, you can just put it in the comments right down below. And I will go through right before I record April's video and pull all of those questions and answer them on that video. It's a madhouse around here. Can you hear the cat meowing now? Um, if you ever have a question that's kind of time sensitive that you can't wait for the next Q&A, you can always contact me at crazysockladypodcast at gmail.com. I'll have that down below as well. Okay, first question. Can you do a video showing your needles and notions collection? And this is a two-part question. So... I'll never say never on that. <laughs> sure, I could probably do that. Um, right now I am a little crazy with summer sock camp prep. So if I do a video about needles and notions, it won't happen for quite a while. But yeah, that could be something down the road that I could do. Have you ever considered dyeing your own yarn? Why or why not? No, the thoughts never really crossed my mind. I did at one point think, oh, it'd be fun to do sock blanks. But yeah, I'm, I would just rather knit the yarn then spend time dyeing the yarn and I don't want to have to make a mess and then clean it up. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. <laughs> okay. I've been looking for a pattern or maybe instructions is the better term for any size sock. I've been knitting all the socks for several months now and I'm wanting to knit them for grandchildren from four years old to adult. Basically, I think what I need most is how many stitches to cast on for the little ones. I have their foot lengths, shoe sizes, etc. So I don't, I only have three different um, sizes in any of my patterns, but I do know that Mina Phillip, Knitting Expat, she has a lot of variety of sizes. She has a kid's pattern. And then I think it's Orange Knits that has the Rose City Rollers pattern and there's a rose city rollers littles i believe and that also has kid sizes those are two that i have done myself um so i'm confident in recommending those this next one has two questions the first one is i'm sure you've been asked this before but i was wondering how you wash your handmade socks um i think i went over that in one of the other q a's but i just put them most of the time lately i have not been doing this but most of the time i'll just put them in like the delicates the mesh bags that zip and um just like depending on the size three four or five pairs in a bag just whatever i kind of feel like will go in there and then um, throw them in the washing machine on delicate with cool water and then i have a drying rack that i set up right here in this room over on the other side of the camera and i will set that up and kind of lay them on the drying rack to dry Lately, I've honestly just been dumping them in the washer and putting it on delicate and washing them and they have been perfectly fine. Um, the second part of that question is, uh, and if you've ever had to mend one of your socks and if so, how? I have actually never had to mend socks. I get this question quite a bit and knock on wood so far, none of us have ever worn a hole in our socks. So I've never had to mend them. Um, if anyone has any good tips, tricks, videos, tutorials that you can put down below. Um, if you ask this question, check down there. Hopefully some people will have some good suggestions for you. 
is it wrong to cake up your yarn ahead of time? What I mean is would you cake up yarn several weeks slash months before you start a project? I have, I don't know. I think I did hear somewhere that you should not do that, but I have, I have yarn that I've caked up so long ago sitting right there and whenever I feel like using it I will use it. Um, I've caked up yarn for a sweater and then it's set for a while and I've never had any issues with doing that. On your vanilla sock how do you know how many stitches to cast on for small medium and large? So within the vanilla sock pattern if you have that pdf pattern I do have a section um, towards the beginning of the pattern where it goes over the different circumferences for the sock I know some of my older patterns do not have that, but my vanilla sock does. Um, I'm working on getting all the older patterns updated to include that, but the vanilla sock patterns, all three of those do have the circumferences in there. And I always suggest that you measure to find the circumference you need at the widest part of your foot. Um, and then it gives you instructions as far as if you want some negative ease and all of that, that's, that's right there in that section where it talks about the different sizes. And if you have um, questions about that, still, you can always email me at crazy sock lady designs. It's the email address is right there on the pattern as well. I'm wondering if you have any tips for fixing socks when the yarn has snagged and torn. Um, I don't, that would be the same as like mending, I think. So if anyone has any suggestions for mending that they've put down below, I would suggest following that because I think you would fix that the same like at the torn yarn, you would fix it the same as if you got a hole in your sock would be my, that's my thought process on it. You would fix it the same way. I saw some cotton and nylon yarn. Is it possible to knit socks with that yarn or you can never knit socks with cotton? You can definitely knit socks with cotton. I think I've done a pair. I can't, I don't have any more of it, but it, I'm pretty sure it had cotton in it. It had like a little bit of everything. Um, and I actually still wear those socks all the time. So yeah, you can definitely knit socks with cotton. I think people that live in warmer climates um, probably prefer that. I am becoming a sockaholic. Welcome to the club. I have patterns that I love and would like to know how to convert them from DPNs to knit them on a nine inch circular as I have come to love them. So I don't, there's really nothing special you have to do to like convert a pattern. If you knit it on DPNs, you can knit it on nine inch or magic loop. You can knit it however you want. A lot of my patterns don't even specify a specific way of working in the round. You can knit them anyway. Um, just with the nine inch, keep in mind, you know, you're not going to have your heel like split on separate needles. So I always, if you check out my nine inch circular video, I show how to put a marker in to mark just the front half of your sock and then the back of your sock. Just put a stitch marker in at that spot so that you have the beginning of round and then your center of round. But there's really no need or special thing that you have to do to convert a pattern. You just knit away, making sure you, you keep that heel on the back of your sock pretty much. <laughs> I watched your tutorial on how to weave in ends and found it really well done and helpful. Thank you. <laughs> Wondering how you handle the very first end right at the cast on edge. I also prefer German twisted cast on, but I find I never can get the join to look tidy when I weave in my ends and especially tricky when I choose to knit a few rows of a contrast, say two or three rows before joining the main collar. Any tips for those trickier ends? So I still just weave them in the same way. Um, if you look at any of my vanilla sock tutorials, you would have to fast forward. I'm sure it's like right at the end, but I'm pretty sure in all of those, I show how I weave in that last end. Um, I will just kind of take it through like a stitch on the top, pull it back through to the inside and then weave it in. But I'm almost positive. I show how to do that on those tutorials. I still weave it in the same, just kind of taking it through a couple of the tops of those cast on stitches. And I still, I do the same if I have, um, cause I like to do a couple of rows of contrast at the beginning of a sock as well, at the beginning of the sock cuff. And that can get a little messy. You have quite a few ends there, but it's all on the inside. And my thought is nobody is going to see the inside of that. So I am not really bothered by how messy it looks when I weave in my ends, because if they're looking for them, 
they're not real friends anyways. <laughs> like, move away. <laughs> Um, did you get a new wedding ring set? <laughs> Looks really lovely. Thank you. Yes, I did. Actually, we just celebrated our 15 year wedding anniversary and Eric bought me a new wedding ring set. But thank you. He did a, he did a good job. I really like it. <laughs> what keeps you motivated? So I'm definitely not always motivated, but I am a very schedule oriented and motivated person. So I tend to stick to like a schedule routine as far as I get up at the same day, every single day of the week. Um, it gives me time to really get stuff done in the morning. And I find that if I do get stuff done in the morning, it makes me more motivated throughout the day. But like I said, I'm definitely not always motivated. There are days where I don't want to do anything and then I don't, but um, definitely sticking to a routine or a schedule and putting that into place helps for sure. Do you have a favorite yarn? So I could never pick like somebody in particular's yarn because I love so many of them, but yarn base, my favorite is a 75-25. So 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon fingering weight yarn. You mentioned that you knit in the car at your boys games while bowling etc how much time of your day are you knitting how much of that time is multitasking time versus just knitting time so there are actually days where i'm lucky to get like an hour of knitting <laughs> i think people really think that i knit all day every day and i don't i mean honestly there are days where it's like like all inclusive and maybe like an hour and half an hour of that is my 30 minutes of knitting every morning that I like make sure I get that 30 minutes every morning um for myself but there are so many <laughs> days where I just don't get that much knitting time a lot of my work time I can spend on the computer versus knitting but I do I think what helps me make a lot of progress on things is that I sneak in as much knitting as I can so like this question said knit in the car at the boys events. When we went bowling, I was knitting any second that I can have this in my hands and be working on something, I am. If it is only five minutes in the car, I'm knitting for that five minutes in the car. If it's five minutes in the car pickup line waiting on the boys to come out of school, you better believe I'm knitting for those five minutes. I'm waiting on something to boil while it's on the stove. I've only got a couple minutes, I'm knitting. I squeeze it in every bit that I can. Um, it is extremely rare that I have time to just sit and knit m my day away. Like I can't even remember the last time I did that, honestly. It seems like on the weekends we'll get distracted by doing something, especially now that the weather is getting nicer, um, which I don't mind. But I really don't even remember the last time I had like a day where I just did nothing but knit. So I would say right now most of it's like multitasking. <laughs> um, I'm kind of craving and needing some days to sit in it and work on design stuff, but it'll all get there. Um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, there's not really a set question on how much time I spend knitting a day because it varies so much. Some days I'll have more, some days I'll have less. I just squeeze it in any second that I can. What kind of yarn, Swift and Winder do you use? I have a Stanwood Swift and Winder. Do I have one of them right here? I was like, I know, I know some things over here. I usually just have them on my um, long part of my desk right here, but I've been doing so many other things on the desk that they're off right now. So here is the Winder. It's not gonna focus on it very well, I'm sure, but it is their mega heavy duty and I love it so much. It's metal. It's so super sturdy. This thing has been through two moves, wound so many skeins of yarn, and it's it's still going strong. I have no issues with it other than the fact that I'm holding it completely sideways right now. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I promise I've had coffee today. Um, so here it is. <laughs> oh goodness. So you just hook it onto your table right there. Wind your yarn. 
I love it. I have a Stanwood Amish Swift. That was the one I got with this. I used it for a couple of years, more than a couple years. And then I did buy an Umbrella Swift. Um, the Amish style Swift, it's tabletop. So you have to take it out and put it together and it takes up quite a big area on your table. And I don't really have that space on my desk to be able to set it up. So I did end up, I still have my Amish Swift that I could use if I wanted, but I did end up buying the Umbrella Swift so that it just connects to the side of the table and I can crank the yarn that way. I'm noticing that my battery is dying on me. So if I may have to finish this another day, might be a costume change in a minute. Um, how many pairs of socks do you think you've ever knit? I have no idea, none whatsoever. I know for myself, I have like 117 socks or something like that, um, but I've also knit them for family members, the boys, Eric, my sister has some, my dad, my mother-in-law has quite a few. So I honestly have no idea, none. I wish I knew, I wish I knew that number, but I, when I first started knitting socks, didn't do Ravelry project pages. So I guess they could go back and count and kind of get an idea, but I, it would not be a total all inclusive because I did not do project pages when I first started socks. How do you plan scrappy socks? Do you knit a certain amount of rows per collar or until it runs out? So I never really sit down with a huge plan on scrappy socks. Um, a lot of the times I will say I'll do six rows per collar or five rows per collar. Right now I have two pairs of scrappy socks going and both pairs I'm doing 10 rounds per collar. So I just kind of go, go off of it that way, but just definitely have fun with them. Any way you do, it's fine because they're scrappy. I'm still trying to learn to knit a pair of good fitting socks. My last pair were really uncomfortable, felt like pebbles. I may have found a yarn needle pattern combo that may work. Do you just swatch to find the right combo with needles and yarn? So you certainly can. Um, if you want to do a swatch and see if you like the feel of that fabric, just make sure that you do it in the round because you are knitting socks in the round. So your gauge may change and that would mean the fabric may change when you're knitting a swatch flat versus in the round. So I would suggest doing it in the round if you're going to do it that way. Okay, we're going a bit um, old school crazy sock lady here where I recorded everything on my phone because battery died battery died. It's Friday afternoon. What's going on? Okay. Um, yes, I can't remember where I ended with that, but yes, I've never swatched before personally. Um, I've just tried different socks to see what I like the fit of, but I'm just that crazy person who likes knitting socks no matter what. <laughs> so if you want to swatch, that's totally fine. Um, just make sure you're swatching in the round. How do you manage your allergies around the cats? I have had cats in the past, interested in getting another, but maybe more allergic, not sure. So I'm definitely not like extremely deathly allergic, breakout in hives type of allergic. Um, I think I have a pretty fairly mild allergy to the cats. Um, if I pet them and then touch my face, my eyes will get itchy, my nose will itch, I'll sneeze. I do get kind of itchy all over sometimes <laughs> um, if I'm around them. Honestly, and it's sad, I just don't cuddle with them that much. Um, if I pet them, I make sure I wash my hands. We don't really, they lay on our bed occasionally, but just at the end of the bed, if they would lay on my pillow, I would probably be a wreck when I woke up the next morning. But um, they don't sleep with us or anything like that. We shut our bedroom door. So yeah, I don't know. If you're highly allergic, that could be kind of scary, but um, mine's pretty mild. I do take allergy medicine every day, and that probably helps. I take a uh, pill, and then I also do a nasal spray, so I would say that probably helps make any symptoms a little less. But yeah, like I said, it's sad. I just don't pet them quite as much or um, cuddle with them. I just can't, or I will be sneezy and my eyes will be so itchy. Um, for cuff down socks, have you ever heard anyone casting on a larger amount than decreasing down the leg slash calf? I have purchased and knit your vanilla socks, but cannot seem to cast on loose enough. 
So there are, I've definitely heard of people doing that. And there are a couple of different things that you can try. Um, you can cast on a larger amount and then decrease back down to where you feel that you need to. If, if you're just having issues with that cast on row, I wouldn't necessarily think you would need to do that. You could probably um, just go up a needle size or even two needle sizes just for that cast on, maybe even the next round and then switch back down to your normal needle size for socks if you're just having an issue with that cast on round. If you're finding that when the sock is on, um, on your calf area, <laughs> see my fuzzy slippers, um, if that whole section right there is a little tighter, because I have pretty wide calves as well, um, then you can definitely cast on a larger amount. And then when you find that you need to, you can decrease back down um, to whatever a cast on or not cast on, whatever stitch count works for the rest of your leg and foot. How often do you clean your diffusers? Do you change the water every time you change the essential oil you want to use? So I will run the diffuser until the, what's in there is gone. Um, unless it is set, like I forgot to run it. <laughs> it's set for a long time, but typically I will within a couple of, mostly two days use up whatever is in there. Um, when I go to put new in, if there's any left that's been sitting there for too long and I'm not, I don't wanna use that, then yeah, I will dump that out, wipe the diffuser out, and then put new water and oil in. I don't ever reuse what's in there and add more oil, if that kind of makes sense. And then if it's empty, if I've used, like it's ran completely out, then I, wipe out the inside, put new water and new oils in. How does a normal day for you look like? How late do you get up and go to sleep and everything in between? So I am a very early riser. <laughs> I wake up at 5 a.m. every morning, sometimes before if I wake up before my alarm goes off, but 5 a.m. up out of bed, I go ahead and get ready for the day, close, makeup. I don't wear very much makeup, but um, clothes, get dressed, all of that. Come downstairs, have breakfast coffee, take my vitamins and get my day started. I do my 30 minutes of knitting every morning. And then if I have time, depending on like the days that the boys have a little bit of a later start with school, then I will get a little bit of work done before I get them up. But I get the boys up, get them moving. They get ready for school while I do any household chores that need done, vacuuming, cleaning a bathroom, like whatever daily chores I have for that day. I try to get those done before I take the boys to school. Then once I take the boys to school, um, if I have any errands to run, I will do that. If not, it is back home and I get started on crazy sock lady work. Uh, that pretty much keeps me busy all day every day, Monday through Friday now, which is amazing and such a blessing. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it until it's time to go get the boys. Lately in the afternoon, I've been um, doing my workouts then. So I will go for a jog, do some weights, the bike, we bought a stationary bike. And then I'll shower, get cleaned up, go pick up the kids. And then when they get home, it's pretty much time for like, get ready for dinner all that kind of stuff. And then we relax, watch some TV or play a game as a family and bed. I'm in bed by, I get ready for bed at 830. And it's usually lights out by like 915 at the latest for me. Um, lately, it's been 930 because I've been reading 28 summers and I'm so sucked in and loving it. But uh, yeah, I I go to bed pretty early. <laughs> so that's kind of my weekdays in a nutshell. What is your everyday skincare and makeup routine? So I actually brought this stuff down here skincare wise that I use because I knew I would never remember all of the names. And this question kind of caught me off guard because this is never something that I think to share because I think y'all are mostly here for the knitting. So <laughs> I am definitely not like a skincare um, 
I don't know, expert at all on anything. I'm not an expert. Definitely not a skincare expert. So um, I don't use a ton, I guess. I love Cetaphil, just a daily facial cleanser. Over the years, I would try so many different face washes and different things. And my face w is very sensitive. It will go like one of two ways. It'll either be super oily or it will be super dry. And I used to get breakouts right along my jawline, um, which I think that is mostly like hormonal stuff, but whatever. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> but Cetaphil it was like a game changer. I kept trying to use like acne products to like clear up this Cetaphil, don't touch the face, leave it alone. Um, but Cetaphil is what I love. I use this twice a day, morning and night. Then I also have Clinique skincare products. And this was like a three pack um, or like a set. I don't know, but it's for oily skin. Because like I said, mine will typically go one of two ways, super dry or oily, and it gets oily right in the T-zone, I think is what they call that. But so this right here, it's just a liquid facial soap. I use it after the Cetaphil. Um, and then I use the Clarifying Lotion Twice a Day Exfoliator. And then the other thing is a moisturizing gel. I use this last in between this and that I use this I am starting to see some some wrinkles and things so getting ahead of the game here using my collagen every day and then also Clinique Smart Custom Repair Serum love this stuff so much I see such a difference um when I use this especially I think the collagen is helping a lot as well I find my skin has been clearer. It just has more of a glow. I really am happy with my skin lately. Knock on wood. I also use Clinique All About Eyes. It reduces circles, puffs, all that kind of stuff. This is a sample one that they had sent me. Um, I order from Ulta and a lot of the times if you order Clinique, you get a ton of free samples of things. So right now I have a little sample container of it. But yeah, I use that for under my eyes and on my eyelids. Um, I think that's it for skincare. Yeah, that's all I do. I use that stuff twice a day. All of that, right? Yeah, all of that in the morning and then at night. Makeup wise, I don't really wear anything. I don't wear foundation. I don't wear powder. I put a little bit of concealer under my eyes and I do use an eyebrow pencil just a little bit because mine have gotten so thin. Um, the older I get, it's like the thinner they get. So I do use a little bit of an eyebrow pencil, very little bit of eyeshadow, like barely nothing. It's like just almost the color of my skin. And then um, mascara, sometimes a little bit of blush. That's it. Yeah, I don't even remember the last time I wore like a full face of makeup. It's probably been 15 years. I just have never liked the way it made my skin feel. So that's it. Nothing crazy. What are some things you really love and you dislike that are not yarn related? Hmm. I'm going to ask you to ask this one again, but be more specific. <laughs> Is it like foods I love or don't love or... Hmm. I, I don't even know. That could be a pretty generalized question. Ask that one again and be a little bit more specific and we'll get to that one in April. Are you going to do a podcast on your beaded sweater? It was so beautiful. Thank you. How do you handle knots in sock yarn? Oh, this is two part. Okay, so uh, beaded sweater. I did do the tutorial for that. It is up. I will link it. Um, yeah, that one was a fun one to do. How do you handle knots in sock yarn? Do you cut it then rejoin in a certain way? So I will usually just cut like before the knot, um, leaving, you know, making sure there's a tail end there that I can weave in and then just restart knitting and then weave in my ends. Um, just how I always do. I don't do anything special to them. 
How do you wash two to three socks and keep them from bleeding on each other in the mesh bag on delicate? So any time that I wash my socks or any hand knit, if I'm just soaking it even, I will use a collar grabber. If it's something that has like two different collars or I'm putting two items in at once, collar grabbers. Or um, Shout has them and I think they're called collar catchers, but this is just what the store happened to have in stock last time. Carbana collar grabber. It's just a sheet, you throw it in and it grabs all of the dye. If, um, I would typically just throw that in the or the washer, excuse me, with the mesh bags, not in the mesh bags, unless I'm washing a pair of socks that I know, because there are just some that's like, I know that red bleeds. Um, so I will put it in the mesh bag and then one outside as well. I use a lot of those. What is the first step I should take if I want to write a pattern? Um, definitely make sure you have a test knit. <laughs> a lot of test knitters. I don't know. I think that's probably the most important step is make sure you have your pattern test knit for sure. My question is, how do you count the rounds for the sock foot? Do you start at the heel turn or at the end of the gusset decreases? I always use my sock ruler, but was curious. So if you check out any of my vanilla sock tutorials here on YouTube, I show how I put my markers down the front of my foot. So say I did 50 rounds for the leg, um, all the markers go down the front and I count the rounds down the front. I never count down the back or the, of the sock or the bottom of my foot. So I will have that 50 rounds for the leg and then the next um, round, I start counting for the foot. Yes, Austin. Can I warm up my spaghetti real quick? Yeah, go ahead, you're fine. Okay. He's gonna warm up his spaghetti. So if you hear that, that's what it is. He's a hungry boy and it's 2.30 and he didn't eat lunch, did ya? Okay, um, so yeah, I just count down the front. So like 50 rounds for the leg, then that's the leg, the 51, like 51st, <laughs> good grief, 51st round is the first round of the foot. I hope that makes sense. You can definitely get more of a visual in those vanilla sock tutorials. What was your process for learning to knit without looking at your work? How long did it take? So I don't really remember. Um, I could crochet without looking. I was a crocheter before I could knit. So I think, I mean, while it's totally different feel of your hands, I think over time, I just kind of started knitting without looking as well. Um, maybe I sat there and was like, okay, you're just gonna try this next row without looking. I am not the best at remembering things sometimes. So I don't really remember if I had a process or how long it took me, but um, it definitely can take some practice. Just try a, like the front of a sock if that's what you're knitting and just just try not to look look at the tv or whatever and then just take a look peek down at your work and see how how it's going just know that you may have to fix some stitches rip back a little bit um but just keep an eye on it and just take definitely takes practice can you do a tutorial on knitting socks one at a time on two circular needles. I see you have one with magic loop, but I would like to see your way of using two circulars. So I'm actually planning, there's the microwave, um, to do that tutorial for summer sock camp. So uh, keep an eye out. <laughs> That'll be coming this summer. Enjoy seeing your cats from time to time. Would you share how you came to adopt them? Did they just show up as some do or did you and your family go to select them. So we actually adopted them from a local shelter um, when we lived in Surprise, Arizona. We got Emmy first. And what month would we have gotten her? It was right after we moved to Arizona. I'm gonna guess we got her in August. That's my guess, um, July or August maybe. And then, was it September? I don't know, it wasn't long after we had her that we got Calvin and we got him right before October. And I remember that because he's a black cat and they said they we got him just in time because they don't have black cats for adoption during the month of October because of crazy Halloween stuff and crazy people. And so yeah, we got him just in time, but we, we adopted them from a local shelter. 
I've been using two circulars for knitting socks and don't really like using DPNs. It looks to me like flexible DPNs would be somewhat like using two circulars, but without the annoying dangling. What's your opinion on those? I see that you prefer Haya Haya to Addy. I'm considering buying a set. What's the main difference between them? So they're pretty much the same thing, the Addy Flexi Flips and the Haya Haya Flyers. Um, my preference for the Haya Haya is just because I like Haya Haya needles over Addy needles. I don't really like the cable on Addy needles. I don't really like the feel of them. I'll use them. Um, because I just love knitting socks. <laughs> Give me some needles and some yarn and I will knit that with them. Um, but if I have the option, I will use the Haya Haya over the Addy. Um, definitely for the Flexi Flips as well. I just like the feel of them better in my hands. I've, I've used both and I prefer the Haya Haya. Um, as far as it being like using two circulars, yes, it's pretty much going to be the same as two circulars or Magic Loop. You have a needle one and you have a needle two. Um, as far as the breakdown of the stitches, the placement of your heel being on needle two, all of that is going to be the same. So it is pretty similar, just with different needles. Do you put your leftover self-striping yarn into your scrappy granny stripe blankets or do you tend to use only speckled and tonal yarns for that project? I put any and every yarn into any and every scrappy blanket. Um, I don't ever pick and choose based on whether it's self-striping or tonal. I just go with it and use it. They're scrappy. They are fun. I am not bothered by any ways that any of it works up. My question is what other kind of yarn you recommend for socks other than fingering weight? So you can use any weight of yarn. You could knit worsted socks, DK socks, sport weight socks. You can knit any weight of yarn. I will admit I've only ever knit fingering weight, but you can totally knit any weight of yarn that you want for socks. If you want like a thicker um, sock for winter or house sock, worsted, DK, all that's going to be great. I am a continental knitter, but I can't get the purl part of the equation. Any tips or could you show a video in slow motion? So I do show, I was trying to think when I saw this question, if I had any tutorials where you can see me doing a purl stitch, the only ones I can think of are going to be the sock tutorials when I'm doing the heel flap. So you could definitely check that out. Continental purling did take me a while um, to get. I could knit continental, but purling I just could not grasp doing the purl stitch continental um but I don't have a specific video for that at this time but maybe in the future that's something I can get around to recording have you ever considered doing an ebook of your favorite socks you have designed I have not um, I don't know. That's just not something I've ever thought of doing. They're all there to purchase and I've never really thought of combining them into an ebook. Maybe one day. When knitting socks and decreasing on alternate rows in the gusset, I find it tricky to recognize if it's a decreased row or not that's next. Sometimes it's diff difficult to see from the row before. Can you suggest a way to make this easier, please? So you can always try, if you're just trying to look at your knitting and see, okay, do I need to do um, a decrease round or am I on a plain knit round? You can always write down your rows. When I first started knitting socks before I really kind of knit enough that I could read those decreases there, I would just write out like um, one, two, okay, I would put like, this is my first round of decreases. I would have a number one that I would circle and then put one, two, so that I knew like row one is my decrease row, row two is the plain knit row, and I would cross them off as I went. And then I would have like, I would write all these out. <laughs> this is how my brain works. Um, two that I would circle and then one, two, three that I would circle, one, two. So those were all of my decreases. Eventually, um, you just get to where you can read those stitches and you can try to practice reading those stitches. So if you write your rows out like that and you see that you have just done a decrease round, you did round one, you marked it off, you're on that next plain knit round, take a look at those decrease stitches there. Try to recognize and see what those look like when you come to them. 
And then as you go and more practice and seeing them, you're just going to be able to look and see, okay, I just did a decrease round. That's a decrease stitch right there. Um, reading your knitting is definitely something that takes some practice, but you can get there. Um, but yeah, that's my suggestion. If you're, you're really having trouble with that, you can definitely write those out. That's what I did for years and years and years. Just write all of them out. What patterns do you recommend to break up color pooling on socks? Sometimes I like pooling, but some yarns have weird, crazy pooling. So I actually, I'm going to ask for y'all to put recommendations for this one as well down below. So if you have patterns that you recommend or ways to avoid that pooling or anything, um, just put down in the comments below. Yes, Austin. Can I go to the park? Yes, you can go yeah. to the park. <laughs> Be careful and have fun. I don't know. Love so you. Huh? You oh, you're fine. They know I have kids. Mm -hmm. And it's spring break. Did I even say it's spring break on this video? I don't think I did. It's Friday. It's the first day of spring break that I'm recording this. Um. Okay, yeah. So I don't... I don't really know of any like patterns that's like that's going to help break up the pooling. So if y'all are more like experienced with that, I guess, and you have any tips, tricks, patterns for those below, put them below. Um, I'm definitely someone who's not ever bothered by pooling or variegated or I just go with the flow and let the yarn do whatever it wants to do. And again, I'm just that crazy person who loves knitting socks no matter what. Give me some needles. Give me some yarn. I will knit socks. I'm totally a process knitter. <laughs> what is your favorite way to join a new skein of yarn to the project in knitting? So I just drop, like say I was ready to join a new one. I would drop the yarn and say this is the new yarn. I just pick it up, make a little loop, put it on the needle, start knitting away. I do not do anything special. I know there are different joins you can do. I just go back in and weave my ends in later. I don't have any special way that I do that. Okay, are we done? Oh, no, we're not done. Why did that break that up like that? I thought, man, there were a lot less questions than I remembered. <laughs> okay, let me grab a drink of water because we have quite a few more questions. Okay, this one is a five part question. <laughs> After the COVID restrictions are lifted, would you consider hosting, planning a meet and greet? I would love that if anyone would be interested in coming. I don't know that anyone would really be interested in coming, would y'all? But I would love that and I would love to meet y'all. And I think that would be so much fun. Um, do you recommend swatching for new sock knitters? So you certainly can if you're someone, I don't really like swatching. I know that's bad, I know. I've never swatched for socks. I just jump right in and knit. And if it's not working, I take it out and I re-knit it. Again, 100% process knitter. Um, but if you are not and you want to know before going in your gauge, tension, all of that, do a swatch, make sure it's in the round. No, <laughs> the next question. If you do recommend swatching, do you recommend swatching in the round or flat? In the round, because I know my tension changes, my um, gauge changes in the round versus flat. <clears throat> have you thought about making a knee high sock pattern? I have not probably because I don't think I would ever wear a knee high sock pattern. So I've never really thought about, about designing one, but I always say that I will never say never. So who knows? What would be the best sock to knit for someone with larger calves? Plain vanilla, something with ribbing in the front or all the way around the leg, etc. So ribbing definitely always gives you a little bit more stretch to your sock. So that's always a great option um, to do some ribbing. You may need to, depending um, on the size of their calf, start out with a larger amount and decrease down. But ribbing is definitely a good option to try. I'm thinking of purchasing a set of interchangeable needles. If you could only buy one set that would be most versatile and have good joins, what would they be? Any things one should consider while shopping for them? So I have a couple of interchangeable sets. The only ones that I have, I'm gonna be completely honest with y'all here. The only ones I have never had any issues with are my Haya Haya interchangeables. I have never had one of them come undone. 
I have had so many other inter interchangeable sets that they come undone. I take that back. I don't think my Likes have ever, Leica, Lika, whatever those are called. I don't think those have ever come undone, but I don't use them as often. But my Haya Hayas are probably my favorite interchangeable. I just, my finger gets torn up from the way I push off on my needle. But those are probably my favorite. I have never tried Chao Gu, and I would love to try an interchangeable set of theirs. I've just never taken the plunge and purchased one because I love their fixed circulars so much. But yeah, the high highs are probably the only ones I've never had like any issues with at all. Um, Lika, I don't really prefer like the cord as much because there's definitely there's so much to take into account. Do you what do you like the cord of those needles? I really don't like the cord of high highs that much either. They get too like wound up on themselves. Same with the Lika. But those two have I don't think the Lika's ever come apart. Haya Haya hasn't ever come apart on me. Um my zings, I I love my zings, but they come apart so much now. It's like the more I've used them, the more they come apart, and I just don't even want to use them anymore. Um trying to think what other ones I have. My Knit Picks ones I really like. Those come apart occasionally, but I don't like the cords on them that much either. <laughs> Basically, I need to try Chao Gu because I love their the needles and I love the cords. My preference lately has just been for fixed circulars, honestly. Um, but maybe that's because I've never tried the Chao Gu interchangeable. So yeah, there's a lot to consider. Do you like the cords? Do you like the needles? Um, if the answer is yes to those, I would say try that interchangeable set. It's just, they're quite an investment for most interchangeable sets price-wise. So it's, it's kind of like, do you dive in and then what if you don't like them? I don't know. I really need to try the Chao Gu and see if I prefer them. But like I said, lately I've just been ordering fixed circulars because I just get so frustrated with most of the interchangeables that I have. When I knit the gusset in the vanilla sock pattern, probably any version like that, I noticed that my SSK looks a very obvious than the knit two together on my finished sock. Very obviously different, I think is what um, they meant. Am I doing something wrong or is there a way to make them look the same? Love how the knit two together side looks. So they do look different. They're two different decreases. Um, so they do look different. I know there's a trick to make them I believe it's the SSK look a little neater. If anyone knows that, will you put it down below? Because I can't remember it off the top of my head. I'm never really bothered by <laughs> them looking different. They're on different sides of the sock. If they were something that I was going to see right there together and it was like, okay, that's kind of bothering me. Maybe it would be different, but they're on different sides of the sock. So I don't ever see them together to think that they look dif like completely different, um, but they do. And I know that really bothers some people. So there is a trick. I wish I could remember what it was. I'm pretty sure it's for the SSK. Maybe it's not. If y'all know, will you please put it down below? Um, Cause I cannot remember. Question, what is your favorite sock yarn and why? So I think I almost, I, I, whew, I already <laughs> answered that a little bit. I like a 7525 and I don't really, I just like how it feels. I like knitting with it, how it works up. That's definitely my favorite. I need a drink. Between, maybe this wasn't the best idea to do <coughs> the summer sock camp video and the question and answer video in the same day. Eric and I are going out on date night tonight and I may not have a voice tonight, honey. Maybe he would be happy. <laughs> It would be a quiet date night. Okay. Um, <laughs> what yarn wears better, softness, stretch, wear, etc. So it really just depends on what you're knitting with it um, as far as how it's going to wear. So I love a yarn with nylon. If you're asking about socks, I prefer a yarn with nylon for socks. It's going to wear better. It's going to be more hard wearing because of that nylon. So I definitely recommend something with nylon for socks and how it's going to wear and all of that. And the super wash definitely makes it a little softer. On your vanilla socks, I know you wear a medium. How many inches stitches do you do for your socks before you start your toe? 
let me grab my, I have my sock roller over here. Okay, um, so I have a sock roller. I have this linked in the Amazon storefront link down below. So for mine, um, it for one, I want to say that just because I do a size medium, that the sizes small, medium, and large in my patterns are based on circumference. Um, everybody's foot is so different. So to say that like a size medium is going to fit a women's size seven or nine is just bonkers to me because you could wear a size nine, but need to knit a small because you have very narrow feet. To me, sock patterns should all be about circumference when this comes to sizes. And then you knit the foot length to fit the, the size of your foot or the recipient's foot. So I do a size medium because that's what fits me circumference wise. Um, then foot length, I wear a size US Women's 9. For me, what works for me is to knit to 7 and 3 fourths inches and then start my toe decreases. So I just have that marked. I had to look. I couldn't remember how many inches it was. Um, I have that marked right here. I just put a little line and an M for me because <laughs> I have Eric's and my mother-in-law's marked on there as well. Um, but yes, that's what I do for a women's size nine that I wear. But again, the, the size in the pattern, small, medium, and large is completely on circumference. I have crocheted for years and am just taking up knitting. I've tried to do continental style because it seems like it should be the most like holding the yarn to crochet, but I just can't keep the tension right and the yarn on my finger. Any tips? Practice. I know that's you want. I wanted some magic tip when I like magic thing that was going to make it all work when I first taught myself continental. So I've pretty much always knit continental. It was a little bit of a weird continental compared to what I do now. Um, and I don't think there's any right or wrong way. Let me say that. But it was just a weirder version of what I do now. <laughs> um, a lot more work than what I do now. Purling. So I used to like knit. But then when I purled, I would like drop the yarn. Pull it forward. And purl this way. It was, it just took so much time. So I was eventually like, this is crazy you could be going so much faster if you just learned a more consistent way of doing it. Um, so I mostly learned for speed because I wanted to knit faster <laughs> and knit all the socks. Um, but yes, it just takes practice. I watched so many videos, read so many things about knitting continental, tried all the things. In the end, it just took practice, so much practice and time to for it to finally click and then I just remember one day it clicking and I was like oh my gosh I actually just did that <laughs> so just time I'm sorry I wish I had some magic trip trick but time and your hands will eventually get that muscle memory and one day you'll have that moment where you're like oh my gosh I got it I was wondering if you have any tips slash tricks for when your socks are starting to wear thin to prevent a hole completely. My favorite pair of hand knit socks are starting to thin out on the balls of my feet and I haven't been wearing them because I do not want them to wear completely through. However, it seems silly to just leave them in my drawer. So I am assuming there is something I can do to pro prolong their life, but I have no idea what. Um, I don't know if you could just, I would think it would be just like mending a sock. Again, though, I've never done that. I've never, I don't even think I really have any that are wearing super thin. Um, so I'm going to point you down below that hopefully some people have put some good suggestions on mending socks. Because I think that's what you'd want to do in this place. I don't think that there would be anything else you could do to strengthen it once it started to wear thin. I think you would just have to mend that spot. But again... Let me know below if you have any tips. And if I'm completely wrong on that, please put your thoughts, suggestions, etc. Um, another one about darning socks. So do you darn your socks? I never have. Um, I've never had to, I should say. It's not that I've never have. I just never have, have had to. How do you dispose of your socks? Do they just go in the bin? Thanks for all the sock spiration. <laughs> that was sweet. 
Um, so yeah, never had any holes in socks, which is like bonkers, I guess. Um, I will say we don't wear them barefoot around the house. Eric does sometimes. It's rare though. We usually wear slippers in the house. Um, so I don't know if that's why we've never gotten any holes. Ones that the kids have outgrown, Austin has passed them down to Wyatt, but once Wyatt has outgrown them or they start to just look a little like, they've never gotten any holes, but they just start to look, boys are funky. They just start to look a little funky. Um, they just, I just throw them away. I don't save them for any reason or anything like that. What do you do with your older socks that you have made but haven't worn as much due to the amount you have but yet don't want to stop making more for yourself? I'm starting to run out of drawer space for myself but have a rather large basket of self-striping yarn that only seems like they want to be socks. So I just, I have some upstairs, which I'm actually going to be going through my sock drawer and passing some along to my mother-in-law and sister-in-law if they want them, um, if they fit, because there are some I've never even worn, but they have an afterthought heel and those do not fit me at all. Like, I do not know why I just continued to make socks with afterthought heels, knowing that I was not going to wear them because they do not fit. Again, process knitter. Um, but yeah, so I have quite a few I'm going to be clearing out, but I have some back here in this cabinet. <laughs> all this right here is socks that have never even been worn. Um, I just keep piling them up in here and just keep knitting more. And then I will have a lot that probably all these will go upstairs once I clear out the ones that I know I'm never going to wear. So I don't know. I just keep knitting them. <laughs> and the ones, if my mother-in-law and them don't take them, I may donate them um, to Salvation Army or something. I don't know what else to do with them, but I'm, it's not going to stop me from knitting. So you knit up those self-striping yarns into socks do it. Do you ever knit two socks at a time cuff down? So yes, I have. I'm assuming you mean like two at a time on one long circular. Um, yep, I have. Not in a long while and I never did it very often. It's just easier for me to pick up a sock and knit on it as like sporadically as I do throughout the day <laughs> um, if it's on one needle one at a time. But I have done them. I actually have a tutorial here on YouTube for socks um, cuff down two at a time as well. Is it okay when you count stitches and find I've got more stitches than required? Is it okay to knit together to get back to proper stitch count? So I'm going to say that depends. Um, if you're doing something that's lace or patterned, it may totally mess you up. It may totally mess up the patterning, but plain vanilla. Oh my gosh, I do that all the time, <laughs> all the time in socks all the time and but again it depends and if you are like way off I wouldn't suggest decreasing a bunch because it can make things look kind of funky but there have been so many times where I have thought that I finished my gusset decreases but I miscounted or just wasn't paying attention or whatever and I'll be almost to the toe and I'll be like why do I have one or two extra stitches like what the heck happened I'll just decrease them and move on because nobody is ever going to see that. And one or two stitches is not going to make that big of a deal. I want to make Christmas stockings. Is there a book or video on color work that is good for a beginner or is there a simple color work I should start with? I'm trying to think if there's any videos. I think Knit Pearl Hunter is one that I've watched for color work. So you could definitely look hers up if y'all have any good books or patterns for learning color work. Please put them down below. I'm looking forward to summer sock camp. Last year, I finally knit a pair of socks. Will crochet socks be included? Yes. So crochet socks, you can put in the wild card cabin in the knit along portion. I, If you're meaning um, like tutorials, I will not be doing any tutorials for crochet socks, but those could be put in the wild card cabin of the knit along. I know you count your rows rather than measure inches to determine when you will put in the toe. When doing top down and a heel flap and gusset, when do you start counting for the foot? Oh, I think, well, this is a different one, I guess. After the gusset decreases or right after you pick up for the gusset. So again, um, like I said before, I just go down the front of the sock. I don't ever count the back of the sock, bottom of the foot. Everything's down the front. As soon as like 
the 50 rounds are done for the leg, it goes right into the foot. Are you going to make a toe up sock pattern with a different than short row heel, like a gusset short row? So right now I don't have any plans for a toe up sock pattern. I fully need to learn more about toe up socks and be more experienced. I have only ever done, I don't even think I've ever done a handful of toe up socks. Like I'm gonna guess three, if that. Um, so I am not experienced in toe up at all <laughs> to be designing them or teaching them. So I don't know. I definitely know that like short row heels, afterthought heels, they do not fit me. So if I ever do venture into toe up, it's going to have to be something I come up with that fits my foot because none of the other options really work, <laughs> but I don't have any plans to do that right now. I know you have a cleaning schedule that you do on your own, but do your boys have chores? I grew up on a farm and we helped with chores lots and I feel that it was a good learning experience. But since we live in the city, we obviously don't have chores like that. I am struggling with having a clean house, but also balancing teaching my children these things if it's always just done and was wondering what your experience was. Thank you. So yes, my boys have chores. They don't always enjoy their chores, but they for sure have chores. So they have chores that they do every day of the week. They also have some that they do just weekly, like their laundry, they do their own laundry and that's done just weekly. Um, daily, they're in charge of making their beds, picking up their rooms. One of them does the trash, one of them does recycling. Uh, gosh, trying to think what else they have to do. Wyatt has to empty all the bathroom trash cans three times a week. They vacuum different areas of the house three times a week. They have started cleaning their bathroom. Um, they alternate weeks that they do that. One week it's Wyatt's week. The next it's Austin's. Austin has to scoop poop out of the backyard. <laughs> and then they um, have different nights that they do the dishes. So they wash all the dishes at the end of the day in the evening. Um, we have a dishwasher, but like dinner pots and pans, things like that that don't go in the dishwasher or can't. Um, they alternate days. And then if it's a big, like a Sunday dinner type dinner, they will do them together. I think that pretty much covers it. But yes, they do have chores. I thought that was super important to teach them. I myself growing up, we never had chores, like nothing like that. <laughs> that was like a schedule that you had to do every day. And I definitely felt like when I moved out, I didn't know how to do quite a lot of things. I'm sure I'd probably done a load of laundry at some point, but like it was just so much that I had to learn and didn't know how to do. So I definitely think it's important for um, my boys to learn that. And it teaches them responsibility and earning money because they do get an allowance for it. So it kind of all around is teaching them different responsibilities. And it helps me not have quite as much to do. <laughs> okay. What about non-superwash wool? Have you done any socks with non-superwash? If so, what do you think? If not, why not? So yes, I think, am I wrong on this? But I think the like Opal and Regia that I've used is non-superwash and it is super hard wearing. It does feel more rustic as far as not necessarily scratchier, but scratchier. Um, it kind of has that feel, but it is super hard wearing. Eric socks hold up so well in those types of yarns. I use Knit Picks interchangeables. The problem I have is that they curl up and I can't straighten them. Is there a trick to keep them a little straighter? So I believe, if anyone else has any tips for this, put it down below, but I believe I've heard people say that you can soak just the cables in warm or hot water and that it'll help straighten them out like you soak them and then straighten them and that it helps keep them straight I've never tried that but I have heard that that works I was wondering how you structure your day do you have a schedule a to-do list a strict or loose routine I'm having a really difficult time putting down my knitting to tackle my to-do list and wondered if you have any tips that is tricky. So one thing that I think really helps me is I get my 30 minutes of knitting in every morning so that regardless, like if I get caught up in chores, I've had my 30 minutes of knitting. So I feel like, okay, I've had that 30 minutes of knitting. I've gotten a little bit of knitting done, a little bit of something for me. 
So now I can focus on some other things for a little bit. And then I do, um, like I talked earlier about my schedule a little bit. I, I don't have like a strict, like you have to do this at that time. As far as like this at one o'clock, this at two o'clock. I don't get that crazy, but I do try to get the chores done in the morning when the kids are getting ready for school, have household chores done by then, and then work the rest of the day. Um, and then if there's laundry or stuff, I'll change those loads as they need changed. But yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of it. I don't have like a super strict day, like as far as times for everything, but I like have a little plan for the day, I guess. Do you have a tutorial on the best way to change yarns for projects like scrappy socks? So I have a how I weave in my ends video and that was on scrappy socks. So I may have chatted about that a little bit there. I basically just drop the old yarn and pick up the new yarn and start knitting with it. Um, you could do a magic knot or Russian join. I'm trying to think what other ones there are, but for scrappy socks where I want the color change to be right there on the side, I just prefer to drop the old color, pick up the new color and start knitting at that side spot on the sock where the side of the round is or the beginning of round. I want to do a roll hem on a sweater. Is there a prep row to knit to keep it curling all the way up? I wonder if you might keep it from curling all the way up. Trying to think if I've ever done a rolled hem on a sweater. I probably have and I just don't remember, but I'm actually not sure. So I'm hoping that somebody's gonna put something down below for if there's like a prep row for a rolled hem. Um, maybe start looking around for a pattern that has a rolled hem and, and see what they recommend. Okay, I think this is our last one. Double check. Yes, this is our last one. So do you have a pattern for gloves with fingers in them? No, I'm sorry, I do not. The only um, patterns that I have that would be anything for your hands is the um, fingerless mitts patterns. I don't have any with fingers in them. I've actually never tried that. I think that would be fun to do um, at some point maybe, but <laughs> don't know that I'll ever do a pattern for them, but it would be fun to knit them. But yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have a pattern for that. All right, so that wraps up all of our questions from the February Q&A video. If you have any questions you want answered for the April Q&A video, just put them right down below in the comments here and I will pull all those questions for next month's video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this and I will see y'all again soon. Until then, happy making. Bye.